Why is it that when you torture an animal, everyone hates you? But when you refuse to eat tortured animals, and when you refuse to pay people to torture animals for you, and you go vegan, everyone thinks you're this weird vegan. What is up with that? What's up with that? I think it's the sheep mentality. I think it's this herd mentality. People think that it's easier to just go with the masses, do what the masses do, and just don't form opinions for themselves. They, they just take the opinion from someone else without doing any research or any homework for themselves. And I know this was definitely the case for myself. There was a lot of vegans in my college, and I thought that they were weird. I thought they were extremely weird, and I thought, what is the point of being vegan? Like, what if you're stuck on an island and the only thing on the island is pigs? You're gonna have to eat the pigs anyway, so what's the point of being vegan? Plus, if you're being vegan to save animals, I'm just gonna eat more meat to make up for the animals that you don't eat. So, what's the point of being vegan? So, that was not an opinion I formed myself, that was just an opinion I took on from other people. And the minute I did some research, I was like, whoa, being vegan is actually really cool. In fact, I'll post the link down below to the video, to a video that I watched that made me want to go vegan in five minutes. Amazing, amazing movie. Highly recommend checking it out if you're not currently vegan yet. Next thing I want to say is when people think about like the raw vegan diet, they think, well, yeah, I know fruits and vegetables are the two healthiest foods on the planet. They've got more vitamins and more minerals than any other food. But you're not going to be healthy just eating fruits and vegetables. You've also got to eat some less healthy things. What makes people think that by eating less healthy things, you'll be more healthy? I don't understand that. Like, if you want the best of something, go for the best. Have the best. Have the best fruits and vegetables in the world. You don't need to eat the less healthy things to be even more healthy. That's, that's just, doesn't make any sense. It'd be like, it'd be like you can put premium fuel in your car or you can put regular fuel. Or you could put premium and regular. And if you put premium and regular, then you'll be even better than premium. It doesn't work like that. If you put premium fuel in, then you put some regular fuel in, you're just diluting the premium. You're making the premium less premium. So if you're eating the healthiest food in the world, fruits and vegetables, but then you're also eating some less healthy things like some, some vegan junk food or whatever, then you're taking away from the benefits of the, of the awesome fruits and vegetables. Whereas if you just ate 100% fruits and vegetables, 100% raw, 100% organic, and you didn't eat the shittier food, you'd feel so much better. You'd feel so much better. Now, a big reason I think people don't want to eat a fruitarian diet, or raw vegan diet, fully raw diet, is because they think it's not gonna fill them up. And fair enough, growing up I thought fruit was a snack. But fruit doesn't have to be just a snack. Fruit doesn't have to be just a snack. My dad saw me cutting up all these oranges one time. I had the whole counter full of oranges. I was juicing orange juice, a big case of oranges up there. And he said, Ted, you know, your grandma, your, no, your, your great aunt, she lived to be 98. She used to have half a grapefruit every day. And I was like, why did she have half a grapefruit? Why didn't she have a full grapefruit? And he's like, because she only needed half. And he's trying to tell me, like, you don't need all that fruit, man. But the truth is, my dad just thought fruit should be a snack, a healthy little snack. If you want to like boost your health or you want to boost your immune system or whatever, you want to like keep things in balance, have fruit for a snack. But if you're trying to live on a raw vegan diet, you need calories, you need enough fruit. And when you start eating enough fruit, you fill up. But a lot of people think that if they go fully raw, they're not going to be full. They're going to be hungry all the time. And people say, Ted, I tried the raw vegan diet and I was just hungry all the time. And I say, oh, here, well, have some of my 12 banana smoothie. It's 1,200 calories in that. They just think, oh, no, I, I could never drink all that. I could never eat all that. That would just fill me up. I'm like, no shit, that's the point. If you want to be full, you need the calories. You need the calories. This is about 100 calories in one banana. If you eat 12 bananas, that's 1,200 calories. If you do that twice a day, that's 2,400 calories. That's probably just as many calories as you're getting from cooked food throughout the day. So you can either eat 25 bananas, 24 bananas, whatever. And having the bananas is easy. Just blend them up, drink them, or just peel them back and eat them. 
And the bananas is, is one example. You could do the same thing with, with cantaloupe, with mangoes, with papayas, with avocados, with nectarines, with grapes, all sorts of fruits that you can get enough calories in quite easily. You just need to eat the volume. And a lot of people are afraid of that volume. They think it's too much. And yet, if you tell them that you eat a fruitarian diet, they think, oh, well, that's, just, that's just not enough. Well, which is it? Is it not enough or is it too much? These are some of the things that <laughs> you're going to have to face when you're explaining things to people or when you're listening to people's excuses for why they don't want to be fully raw. Um, and people have tons of reasons for why they don't want to be fully raw. People have tons of reasons why they're, they're fully raw for a period of time and then they go back to cooked food. That's totally fine. People, at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want. If they want to be fully raw, they'll eat fully raw. In fact, anyone you're seeing right now eating fully raw, they're doing it because they want to. And anyone that's eating cooked food, they're doing it because they want to. And I assure you, if they did not want to be eating that food, they wouldn't. We, we have choices as adults. We can decide what we want to eat. Little kids, maybe not as much. If you're like a four-year-old or five-year-old or six-year-old, whatever, your parents pretty much dictating what you're going to eat. You don't really have the, the capacity, mentally, I don't think yet, to quite like negotiate what you want to eat. Some kids do, but most kids, they, they're just eating what's given to them. They're not even, food's not even something to think about. They're thinking about their friends or the video games or... Their, whatever they're thinking about, their, their adventures that they're about to go on. They're not thinking about what's on their plate. They're just eating what their parent gives them and they're trusting that the parent is giving them the right food. So, if you're an adult though watching this video, if you're above the age of 13, you can decide what you want to eat. You can negotiate. You can learn the art of negotiation. You can make the money to go buy the food that you want to eat. You can eat whatever you want. If it's fully raw, if it's fully vegan, whatever, you can eat that way. And I think that one of the most powerful things you can do is unite with other people. Unite with other people. We are, we are so much stronger as a group than we are as just individuals. So a really, really fun thing I like to do every single year is go to the Woodstock Fruit Festival. The Woodstock Fruit Festival is the best time of my life every single year I'm there. And it's happening in the year 2018 on August 19th to the 26th. And I'm going to be there. A bunch of other people are going to be there, a bunch of other raw vegans are going to be there, a bunch of vegans from YouTube are going to be there. And when you unite with these people, when you see 500 other people walking around, they're all vegan, they're all eating raw foods, it's very inspiring, it's very motivational. And you realize, holy smokes, like, for even myself, who I've been doing this diet for quite a while, it's still very inspirational for me to see someone else eating a big bowl of fruit eating a big bowl of zucchini noodles with all the sauce on it. It's very inspirational. And I leave the Woodstock Fruit Festival every year. When I go home, I just feel so empowered. I just want to give back and back and give back to the community even more. So this year what I did is I, I filmed a documentary at the Woodstock Fruit Festival. I spent the whole time there just capturing amazing shots of people doing beautiful things. I put it together into an hour-long film. It's called the 2017 Woodstock Fruit Festival. And I'm going to be releasing that at the end of the month here. If you guys want to contribute to the cause, contribute to the, the documentary, then you can check out the link below in the GoFundMe. Every single person that donates, every single person that contributes, we're going to be planting one fruit tree in your name. So if we can get 100 people to contribute, we'll be planting 100 fruit trees. If we can get enough money raised, I'm going to pick someone who's great at videography to come next year for free and film an even better documentary for next year. So if you guys know of an amazing filmmaker that I should check out, that I should look into, see if we can bring someone on board to help film the next great Woodstock Fruit Festival documentary, let me know. I just want to let you guys know that there is a documentary being released at the end of the month and just looking for some support through the GoFundMe link below. So thanks so much for watching guys. Much love from Vancouver, British Columbia. Peace out, thanks for watching. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up before you leave. If you're still watching, those thumbs up mean a lot. Let's see if we can get this thing to over 300 thumbs up. Peace out.